Y'all won't believe what went down in that game on Sunday. It was a total disaster for our beloved Cowboys. I mean, they busted their tails to grab that second division title in three years, locked in a playoff game at our home turf, the sacred ground where we hadn't taken an L since week one of last year. And what happens? We get straight up embarrassed by the Packers, a bunch of young guns who barely made it to the playoffs. Now, the Cowboys put in some serious work towards the end, tried to make it a close call, and we only lost 48-32. to But let me tell you, this game slipped through our fingers real quick. Green Bay was up 27-0 with just a tick over 100 seconds left in the first half, and it was mainly because of these five plays that the whole shebang was over so darn early. I know y'all are die-hard Dallas Cowboys fans like me, so stick around because we're diving deep into the breakdown of those plays that led to this humiliating defeat against the Packers. We'll talk about what went wrong, what could have been done differently, and whether Dak Prescott, Micah Parsons, and the gang can bounce back stronger than ever. Trust me, this ain't your typical post-game analysis, we're getting into the nitty-gritty, so stay tuned till the end. Let's check out the five plays now. 1. Darren Bland's illegal contact erases sack. Y'all might have missed it, but them Dallas boys on defense came out swinging. So, the Packers decided to kick things off with the ball, and bam, first play, Aaron Jones gets shut down for zilch. Looked like our defense meant business right from the get-go, y'all. And that wasn't a fluke, either. Next play, Jordan Love tries to sling it, but he's got no escape route. Boom! Chauncey Galston and Donovan Wilson tag-teamed him for a sack. But hold your horses, there's a flag flying cause Darren Bland got tangled up with the receiver downfield. Now, they hit Bland with some illegal contact call, wiping out that sweet sack and handing Green Bay a fresh set of downs. We were this close to a third and long on their first drive, but nope, that penalty messed it all up. Green Bay didn't even face another third down until they punched in that first touchdown, the first of many, mind you. So, imagine if that penalty hadn't messed with us. We could have shut M down early. That's how the game goes, though. But don't you worry, we got more coming. Keep an eye on them Dallas Cowboys, especially with stars like Dak Prescott and Micah Parsons. This NFL season's heating up, and we're right in the mix, y'all. Stick around, there's gonna be some football magic happening with our Cowboys in Dallas. 2. C.D. Lamb can't reel in the ball on third down. Y'all, that first drive from the Packers was like a punch in the gut making it clear the Cowboys had to rely on their offense big time. But guess what? They go out there and decide to run the rock on the first two plays. Now, that got me scratching my head. Dak Prescott scrambles and moves the chains, but we're quickly staring down another third down. We needed eight yards, right there at midfield, and let me tell ya, it was looking dicey. Dak takes the snap, eyeballs C.D. Lamb in the middle of the field. Now, Dak's gotta thread the needle round a defender's mitts, but he hits CD's outstretched hand. And guess what? The dude can't haul it in. Shock City. So, our opening offensive drive hits a roadblock, and Brian Anger trots into punt. That right there's the first domino to fall, set in the stage for a real long night. Dallas Cowboys, man, we gotta shake off that rough start and get back in the game. It's all about bouncing back just like Dak Prescott slinging those passes and Micah Parsons bringing the heat. 3. Jer Alexander gets away with contact, picks off Dak Prescott. Alright, y'all, let me break down what went down with them Dallas Cowboys in that game. So, after the defense managed to make Green Bay punt, we had one last chance to keep things tight, you know? But dang, we got pinned back deep in our territory after that punt, making it a real struggle to move that ball. Now, Picture this, a couple of plays later, it's third down. Prescott's eyeing Brandon Cooks for a slant, but guess what? Jer Alexander steps up and snags that ball for an interception. Looked like he might have grabbed Cooks' shoulder on the replay, but no flags flew. And then, here's the kicker, Packers start at the Dallas 19, and you betcha, touchdown in just three plays. That right there was the moment we knew the Cowboys weren't coming out on top. Now, let me tell you, if you're a true Dallas Cowboys fan or just into NFL football, you gotta stick around till the end of this video. We're talking Dallas Cowboys, we're talking Dak Prescott, we're talking Micah Parsons, the whole shebang. For Dak Prescott takes a bad sack on third down. 
All right, folks, buckle up because we got ourselves a wild ride in Dallas. So, picture this, Cowboys down 14-0, to zero, and things are looking kind of bleak. But hey, hold your horses, because here comes the comeback trail. So, after that interception fiasco, the Cowboys start kicking it into high gear. Tony Pollard's tearing up the field with a couple of monster runs, and Jake Ferguson pulls off this insane catch that puts him right on the Green Bay 35-yard line. But hold on, we hit a snag, it's third down, and we're sniffing at that sweet field goal range. Dak Prescott's got the ball, eyeball and lamb, but the dude's covered tighter than a bull rider at the rodeo. So, what does Dak do? He tries to make some magic happen, scrambles like a chicken with its head cut off, but there's not a open downfield. Instead of chucking it into the stands, Prescott takes a sack, loses six yards, not ideal, you know? Sure, it might have been a Hail Mary for a field goal, and yeah, we're still down 14-0, but hey, those points could have been a game-changer. Prescott, getting all tangled up in the pocket, turns a promising drive into a downright disaster. 5. Jordan Love's ridiculous touchdown is a dagger in the Cowboys. Well, dang it, the Cowboys found themselves in a pickle once again, having to lean on their defense, and let me tell you, it ain't been the smoothest ride lately. Yup, same old story against the Packers, they marched down the field, converting a couple of those tricky third downs, and bam, there they were at the Dallas 20-yard line. So, the Cowboys thought, alright, time to unleash our pass rush, and they even got a couple of fellas breaking free at Jordan Love. But that young QB ain't playing around, he chucked that ball deep into the end zone, connecting with Dontavian Wicks, who straight up schooled Stefan Gilmore. Now, let me tell you, that play felt like a gut punch right there and guess what, it turned out to be just that. Our defense, well, it showed about as much ability to stop that greenhorn offense as I do resist in a plate of barbecue. And our offense, they were getting better with each drive, but dang, couldn't quite put all the pieces together. Too little, too late, I reckon. You know, it's like watching a rodeo, thrilling, a bit wild, and you never know what's gonna happen next. Speaking of excitement, did you see Dak Prescott and Micah Parsons doing their thing? These Dallas Cowboys are like a roller coaster, and you can't help but root for them, even when the going gets tough. So, folks, grab a seat, cause the Dallas drama in the NFL ain't over yet, and we're just getting started. Alright, folks, let me spill the beans on the latest NFL buzz, all the chatters about what's cooking with the head honcho of the Dallas Cowboys, none other than Mike McCarthy. So, the Dallas Cowboys just wrapped up their fourth season under Coach McCarthy, and boy, was it a real heartbreaker on Sunday. The final score read 48-32, but if you caught the game, you'd know it was nail-biting close. Dallas got roughed up by a young, green squad from the Green Bay Packers. Despite having home field advantage, recent playoff experience, a coach with a Super Bowl under his belt, in the end, they look like a team with rookies and sophomores. Now, I get it, players gotta own up to their game, and they're taking heat for this Cowboys meltdown. But you know how it goes when things hit the fan, all fingers start pointing in one direction, the head coach. And hey, I can't help but wonder, what's Dallas gonna do about McCarthy's status? Are they gonna stick with him or make a move? It's like watching a cliffhanger episode of your favorite show, you just gotta know what happens next. Speaking of the Cowboys, did you catch Dak Prescott's moves? That guy's a beast on the field. And Micah Parsons, too, he's bringing some serious heat. I mean, the Cowboys have the talent, but something's gotta give. Will Dallas bounce back stronger, or are we in for more heartbreak next season? Mike McCarthy's professional situation is at the heart of all the current dysfunctions in the Dallas Cowboys. Man, it ain't just cause the Cowboys took an L happens in the NFL, you know? Sure, Dallas made history being the first team to lose to the seventh seed in the playoffs, third year in a row, mind you. But, hey, losses are part of the game. But this one? It wasn't even close. We're talking 27-0 way before halftime. And even though the Cowboys made it look kinda respectable, truth is, they got beat in every aspect of the game. Now, when you take an L this big, you gotta talk about it, especially when everything's supposed to be in your favor. Dallas was as healthy as it gets heading into the playoffs, with players like Dak Prescott and C.D. Lamb ballin' at their highest level. But none of that mattered. The whole team no-showed and failed. So, back to the coaching, man. That's where the spotlight's at 
and that's why Mike McCarthy's name is in the mix. Monday morning, Ian Rappaport spilled the beans about McCarthy's situation and dropped Bill Belichick's name, which, let's be real, everyone's throwing in the mix. He hinted at some significant, significant changes as soon as Monday. I think it's fair to say the Cowboys will have a significant, significant decision in the next few hours, day, maybe a day and a half, something like that. Just to make sure they know which way the organization's heading. Definitely considering shelving Mike McCarthy. My understanding is, for the Dallas Cowboys, not saying it's definitive, but it's a consideration. When you got head coaches out there, and seven other teams, exact seven, are looking for a head coach, if you're gonna make a move, it's gotta be sooner rather than later. And the fact that Bill Belichick is still out there, the GOAT coach, I know he's tight with the Joneses, definitely something that has to be added to the equation. Rappaport spot on saying, if you want to make a move, Jeff Probst style right before the tribal council vote, now's the time. There's seven head coach spots open, Patriots filled theirs, meaning there's seven spots where your top pick could land if you don't pull the trigger quick. Belichick might be the greatest, no denying that, but there are other candidates in the mix. Jim Harbaugh's looking like he wants back in the NFL, and Mike Vrabel's up for grabs. Ben Johnson keeps surprising with the Detroit Lions. Tines of the Essence Did a poll right after the game on BTB, and you'll be shocked, almost everyone wants McCarthy gone. But what about the Jones family? That's the million-dollar question, ain't it?